coming to you from beautiful Flagstaff, Arizona. This is the Drinking Horn Meadcast. Join us as we take a deeper dive into mead and mead culture. Camera A, camera B, camera one, camera two. Hello, everybody. We're waving at the camera. Hi. Hi. We're kind of doing jazz fingers at the camera. (laughs) I like to do things in the podcast that people can't see. Yes, but they will be able to see this video on our YouTube station. I think. I think I'm going to put it on there. Yeah, you you need to tidy up a little bit. Yeah. Uh Uh-oh. (laughs) Uh-oh. Welcome, everybody, to another podcast episode, another Meadcast episode, here with Evan Anderson. Evan, how are you doing today? I'm doing pretty great. We're also here with Nick. How are you doing, Nick? As we cheers our mead, and I'm about to be a lot better when I take a little sip of this black cherry drinking yeah. horn mead. I got another meeting later after this, but uh, mm. they don't expect a lot out of you when you make booze. That yes, or, or they expect certain things. But you only have a little tiny, uh, you know, you have a little halfer. Yeah, this first one. Not even halfer. Yeah, this first one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this episode, let's get right into it, so people aren't uh, wonky about this. We're we're going to talk about the mead hall. This mm-hmm. is a series. I'm going to have a couple episodes where you're going to talk about the creation of a meat hall. I think that's awesome. I think people will love to hear the whole process of creating a, uh, not creating a business because you already did that, but creating an extension of the business. Yeah, absolutely. And it's going to be fun because we're doing it as we go. We're recording as we, as we make progress in there. So yeah. it'll be, it'll be fun to listen to the last episode versus the first one and see what I got wrong. <laughs> hey, no, nothing, there's no mistakes, right? Only learning opportunities. That's right. Yeah. So many learning opportunities. <laughs> uh, well, cheers for drinking the black cherry. Why don't you talk just a real quick bit about this black cherry mead that just came out on Friday. Absolutely. So this black cherry is actually the first, or it's a, you know, it's a remake of the first batch that we ever made. I'm just watching Nick's very satisfied face as he drinks it. So good. I mean, that is black cherry right there. Mm. Black cherry, honey, fermented, reverse that, fermented honey. So the the very first batch of black cherry, I used, we used sulfites in it. Mm. The very first one. And when I was having to like relearn titrations and wear gloves and a mask and goggles to put this stuff into something that I wanted everybody to be drinking. It just seemed like a terrible idea. Yeah. So now we don't. That was the first batch. Now we don't use any sulfites, sorbates, no preservatives whatsoever, which is, that's its whole own episode. Yeah. Just a little teaser. Yep. A little little tease. Here, you want to learn about no sulfites and sulfates? You're going to have to keep listening. All right. Uh, Yeah. So let's talk about the meat hall, the the meat hall, the drinking horn meat hall that will be online and you will be in line for some delicious mead in 2020, spring of 2020. We actually have to go kind of far back to look at the genesis of this idea. And it really started with a visitor. It did with a guy. The huh. guy, Guy Fury. I see what you did there. Oh, this is fun. That's, did you say Guy Fury? I did, Guy Fury. What? I know that guy. He's on TV. He is. He's on the Food Network all the time. He dominates. Dominates. Well, you know, what are you going to do? Except have him over to your place. Yeah. yeah. How'd that, how did that uh, conversation start with him? Uh, it was a, there's another couple of restaurants here owned by uh, John Conley. And he uh, turned Guy, they're, they're good friends, and he turned Guy on to us when he was, uh, he was coming into town to do some more filming at one of his restaurants. And he was like, well, what else should I do while I'm there? And here we are. Okay. So, so he, he, sent, he sent him our direction initially. Nice. And what are some of the restaurants that John Conley has here? Salsa Brava, Fat Olives. Am I missing anything else? Mm, I don't think so. But if you are, at sorry, that point. sorry, John, if we forgot anything. <laughs> no, I hey, that you know, salsa brava and fat olives. That's quite a bit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So he is friends with Guy Fieri. He came out, Guy did to do some filming on his road road show, road trip. What's it called? No, so it wasn't the road trip. It was, uh, or no, no, yeah, you're right. It wasn't the triple D. I'm too used to saying it wasn't something. <laughs> it wasn't triple D. So it wasn't his diners, drive-ins, and dives. It was the uh, Guy's family road trip. This is the very first episode. You can see me making a fool of myself in like the last. Last five minutes of that first episode so nice ending with evan yeah classic cool so he came here and what in the world does that have to do with eventual creation of the meat hall what what did what did he do for you well when he came here like we had our production you know i don't know we had two four barrel fermenters i think at that time maybe maybe three 
So like we didn't have a lot going on, um, but he came out and, you know, we had five or six flavors at the time. He tasted them and our, our front room, which is at the time, it, it, it's, it's where we're recording this right now. Mm -hmm. And it functions on the, it functions on the weekends as a tap room Thursday through Sunday. Um, the rest of the time it functions as a, sometimes a podcast studio. <laughs> sometimes it's where we do our taxes and put together stuff for events. <laughs> uh, we work on wood in here sometimes. It's crazy. Yeah. We use hot glue to package things up and send it yeah. to you guys out here. You can order online. And when you do, this is the spot right here to my left that we put the meat in the boxes and send the deliciousness to you. So that's right. Yeah. So we're in this tasting room and it wasn't always like this even. Mm -hmm. So, so he came in and I literally had like my kitchen table from my house was in here and like if people we didn't have open hours at all but if people managed to kind of wander their way in here we'd just do a tasting for free and that's that's all we ever did i had no desire to own a bar of any sorts you know and so it was just all with the idea of doing wholesale production and a uh, guy saw that and was like what the hell are you doing like people don't want to drink in front of your work that's what he told me and it's kind of always stuck in my head. And so we actually shoestringed this together for like under a thousand bucks mm. beside the kegerators. But like for those of you who can't see in here, there's a lot of wood and uh, all the tables and the bar are all built with uh, bee boxes, old bee boxes that have outlived their use for bees. Bee box. The bees once lived up in this box, but now I use it in my bar for locks. Kicks and sticks, that's what we do, because we make this mead just for wicka, you. Wicka, wicka fresh. Yeah. <laughs> so bee boxes, not beat boxes, uh, but bee boxes. Bee boxes. Up in this, up in this place. All yeah, over the place. It's really cool. If, if you've ever been in here, uh, the bar, air, like the where you order the mead, where you sit down at the tables, are about nine or so bee boxes, like beehives. Um, that are made out of that. So that's cool. So he came in here. He said, people don't want to drink where you're working. So you built this place out and have turned into a tap room that's open Thursday through Sunday. Now, what starts to happen in your mind? Well, it's crowded in here, <laughs> which is ridiculous because it's like, you're not too sure if you're coming to the meadery or going to your storage unit because it is just tucked <laughs> away into like a light industrial little complex Or here. possibly to your murderous death. It's true. It's it's when a dark, come, scary alleyway out here. Yeah, you come pulling up here at night and you're thinking, am I going to get mead or matter dairy? Yep. And then you take a turn and realize there's a full parking lot. You're like, oh, yeah. this is where I go. Sorry, I'm not. I'm not playing your spot up too well. <laughs> no one will get murdered here. It's very nice. It is very nice. Yeah, very safe. Yeah, it's Flagstaff. Yeah, yeah. So it's. Uh, but it just is. Uh, we needed more space. It's always crowded in here. Um, we don't have any food, so that's not ever. You know, all, most of our meads are 13 percent plus. So it's kind of nice to have some food when you're drinking mm -hmm. them. Help moderate yourself and whatnot. <laughs> Slightly, you know. yeah. And. Uh, I think those are really the two biggest things that we didn't have any space. It was filling up and people would be just standing and drinking, which is fine if you're wanting to stand and drink, not if you're being forced <laughs> to stand and drink. Maybe you did want a chair that day. Uh, so that was, that was the big, you know, kind of push for us. And uh, we sort of ran into a spot, basically. We had kind of been knowing that we needed to, to move. We needed to do something. And we had actually looked at renting another space, which would just like... We'd have a bigger tap room, but we'd still be in the same weird light industrial complex that we're in for production. So, yeah. So we decided to do something new. Okay. So you did first look at a spot in the same area, but what happened to all of a sudden change that? Uh, my wife ended up finding a spot in downtown Flagstaff. And for people that are familiar with Flagstaff, it's a pretty hopping in downtown. You know, this is a university school. We've got a Lowell Observatory. We've got Gore, which like if anybody check your Gore. shoes, it says Gore-Tex on it. Oh. They originally started out as a, a medical company. Uh, they make heart stents and stuff like that as well. And so there's a company, you know, Gore is up here. There's a lot of industry up here. Um, I totally forgot where I was going with that. Son of a bitch. <laughs> we were talking about uh, heart stents and uh, the medical supplies of Flagstaff. <laughs> the medical supplies. So when did you first get into heart uh, stent well, creation so engineering? I started making machines to create heart stents back in 63. Okay. Yeah. Long before I was born. Just after the, the revolution, the Jamaican revolution. Yeah. Yeah. I recall that one very clearly. Yeah. It was big in Flagstaff. <laughs> okay. So... <laughs> All right, we're back uh, talking about you finding a space downtown and why downtown was a draw. 
Ah, walk through traffic is huge. Being able to get into downtown Flagstaff, there's, I mean, it's a big, that's where I was going. Damn it. I just messed it up again though. <laughs> no, no. So, uh, that's like, there's a whole lot of industry here. There's a university here. So it's a, it's a very lively downtown as well as the fact that like, we're the only place in the state for the most part that doesn't get above a hundred degrees for eight months out of the year. Mm. So we're, it's kind of a nice place to be. We're up in the pine trees for those that have never been to Arizona. Flagstaff is at 7,000 feet in the pine trees. So we might also be the highest elevation metery too. Oh, that'd be cool to find out. Yeah. We got to find that out. It's, I think there's a good chance. Yeah. 7,200. Try to beat it, suckers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm, I'm from Carbondale, Colorado, and I'm at 7,400, and Don't. I'm starting a metery. No, you're not. <laughs> not anymore. I'm going to give you terrible advice. I'm digging a hole and putting your metery <laughs> 300 feet lower. <laughs> so when you think of Flagstaff, or sorry, when you think of Arizona, uh, when I did, I always thought of the Wiley Coyote cartoons and like the saguaros oh, yeah. and cactus and that's it. Dry, we're up in the pines. We're 7,000 feet. Yeah, we're not, well, we're still dry and warm, but... Uh, uh, we got some some shade and some beautiful mountains. Yeah. So you're in downtown uh, walking around, and you said your wife found out about this opening. Yeah, and so it was it used to be a place called Galaxy Saddles, and they sold like leather goods and saddles, obviously, and other sort of like tack and uh, rural. I don't know what else do you want to. What else did they sell? Horsey stuff. Yeah, horsey stuff. I like yeah. it. <laughs> they weren't horsing around in there. No, <laughs> yeah. not at all. They, no, it doesn't seem like it because they were around for a long time, <laughs> like 60 years almost in that Ooh. same spot. Um, and they didn't go out of business. They decided to move up to the east side of town. Mm. But uh, And it was opening up. And so we kind of figured, well, open spot in downtown, 2,000 square feet. Like, let's hop on it. Yeah. So we did. Mm. Ride the crazy train. Yeah. How quick was that decision made? Really, really fast. <laughs> like, too fast. Like, we're signing papers before I'm like, wait. <laughs> Wait, how much is this going to cost me? <laughs> You're eating dinner, having the discussion, and the guy walks in with the paperwork. You're yeah. like, "Wait!" Uh, and I didn't even look at it. I just signed it and pushed him out the door again. Like, yeah, and like, finished your uh, macaroni and cheese and yeah, hot dogs. Told him to send me a copy. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was really, really fast. It was kind of a sudden move, but like, which is a pretty stark contrast to like the way when we were deciding to put this one here, the metery at its current location was, despite it being a terrible location for a tap room, it's a great spot for production. Um, yeah. And we'll talk about that uh, in another episode. We'll talk about the differences between creating that meat hall and creating this metery, because I think a lot of people, again, might be tuning in to listen to this or might find us when they're looking at potentially starting their own metery. I think we're going to yeah. get a couple of people with that, with the growth going on right now in the industry. Absolutely. So you had this space and you knew that you wanted a, a tap room, a tasting room there. Did you always envision it as being a mead hall? Always. <laughs> always and forever <laughs> i really did like i wanted it to be i mean meat is so different right like we we get invited to a lot of beer festivals and wine festivals and even whiskey festivals and stuff oh, like that that's, that's awesome. to get invited to a mead festival we had to make our own pretty much i mean we have been invited to uh meeting in the gardens numerous times out in california and we really want to get out there but it's far away and we're crazy busy but sorry dave we're gonna get there eventually dave hold your horses will be there soon. Next year, I promise. Ooh, promise. You hear that? Yeah, Straight from year. the horse's mouth. Well, right from here. Evan's mouth. I am There's a, a lot of horse. horse references. I just said, hold your horses, galaxy. So, <laughs> well, we are in the Southwest. That's right. We carry we six shooters. Like we, I got a seven shooter, actually. Oh, shit. Mine's yeah. just magazine fed. I don't know how to do that. We should, uh, we should have an episode where we go out shooting. I'd be in. Yeah. Shooting's fun. Yeah. Side note. Um, yeah. Yeah. So keep listening for that one. The audio is going to be <laughs> sweet. <laughs> Uh, all right, so uh, you always envisioned it as a meat hall. I think that's what we're talking yeah, yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, totally yeah. This meat envisioned. is good, Devin. Oh, man, 13%. No. We and both emptied our glasses already. Really fast. Don't. <laughs> uh, always a meat hall. Like, it's just meat is so different from beer and wine and everything else that, like, we wanted to kind of carry that through with the with the whole process, you know? Always follow through. Never half-ass two things. Whole-ass one thing. Ooh. And so we're whole-assing it. And uh, <laughs> definitely whole-assing <laughs> it. And so it's... It was really all, always the kind of vision that we, that we put forth. And so right now it's being built. And so we're really hoping that like our vision for what we had for this is also being properly conveyed to general contractors and then subcontractors and then workers. And then, well, uh, if it's not, we'll fix whatever we need to in the end. <laughs> yeah. And so if you listen to this now, stay tuned because we will have, if it's not already up, a part two and a part three talking about that process of the build out. Um, and so I'm, I'm really excited to 
we are recording in a working metery, so there is a phone phone call. Yeah, go for it. I was going to say, you keep talking. Oh, I'll keep talking. <laughs> Once upon a time, in a land not so far away, Evan was answering a phone, potentially. So, yeah, I'm going to pause this. Oh, for spam. Uh, mm, really? Yum. I haven't had spam in a while. Dude, but it squeezes through the phone and those little, like, holes. It's not so good. Here's our first question for our audience. Uh, you can leave the comment below. Uh, what do you put on... How do you cook your spam? How do you eat your spam? And we'll just let them, uh, let them go, go with that. Go with that. Yeah. All right, so... I like it fried with an egg. Ooh, nice. All right. I like it fried with Velveeta. Oh, see, that's because you're from the Midwest and I'm from the Southwest. Mm, that's a whole conversation itself. I put it's a fried egg on everything. Well, th that's not a bad idea. Con huevo. They're like, you want some mac and cheese? I'm like, con huevo. <laughs> you want some chocolate chip ice cream? Con huevo. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so from fried eggs to meat hall. <laughs> meat is different. You want to create a different environment. How are you going to do that? Well, I mean, as you're thinking right now, and you keep hearing us say the word meat hall, and like, I'm hoping it exactly matches all of your visions all crammed together into one more beautiful vision. Mm. It's going to look like the, like the ribs of a ship. Like if you took a ship and stuck it upside down inside, that's what it's going to look like. So you're going to cool. have like a lot of wood, a lot of, uh, you should see the shields. We're building all the tables and everything. Cause I'm kind of a, I don't know, do it yourselfer yeah, you or a penny pincher Both. or, uh, I, there's, I got a lot of other words we could probably use, but I'll, we'll stick with those. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> so like we're making our own tables for it. And they're they're awesome. It's we're taking we're making shields. We're beating the crap out of them with like chains and chainsaws and like meat claws and each and, other's heads and faces. Yeah, the one's got blood on it. It's awesome. Yeah, I mean you have to have blood on your shield table. Yeah, it's why just, not? I have to. It is. By the way, County Health Department, we are joking. Yeah, for real. It's just red paint. It's okay. But really, it's really blood. <laughs> And uh, so we're making all of that. We're doing. Uh, we're making the bar ourselves. We're doing a lot of a lot of the woodwork in there ourselves. Which we have uh, I've got about thirty percent done right now. Yeah. Nice. I can't <laughs> wait to see it, and, and we'll share pictures, obviously, on our oh, Instagram yeah. page, Facebook. Um, we'll take this opportunity to say, please subscribe to our Facebook and Instagram because we have some fun with that too. Yeah. Hit uh, that subscribe button. Hit it. Hit it hard. Uh, what, so as you're going through this idea, like you haven't quite, or maybe as you're signing the paperwork, <laughs> what's the debate going on in your head or just before signing it? You know, they're really like, I mean, there's always a debate inside of my head, like running a business. It's always, it's always running numbers against each other for sure. And trying to figure out like the best thing for the business and for the employees and for everything else. Cause it's more than running a business. I mean, there's numerous people's livelihood that depends on us being able to keep this thing going and we're not strong, super well established. You know, we are within our state, but like we're young, we're only three years old, just little baby metery. Get in my belly. <laughs> and so like it's, it's getting that started and being able to support all those people. And that's, I guess the scariest part, the part that's going through my head is just, you know, all right, how do we, how do we make the numbers work? How do we afford it? How do we get a general contractor? How do we get all the insurance for this? How do we, all the, how do we's, cause it's not like we've ever done this before. So it's like, I, how do I get water? Like what's, what are my utilities down in the city? I don't know. Yeah. So, yeah, this is a uh, new territory and you're going at it. You and Kelly are just going at it, you know, I mean, kind of gung ho by yourselves. I mean, it's not like we you drink have from someone the fire you drink, <laughs> we drink. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. You get to drink from the fire hose. That's what it feels like. A lucky, lucky, lucky little boy. Cause you know why? You get to drink from the fire hose. Yeah. So we're well hydrated. <laughs> Are you? <laughs> no, are you really? I'm really not. <laughs> no. I think we both suffer from chronic dehydration. Yeah, yeah, I remember that water stuff as I try to get this last little bit of mead. Right? Is there a drip? Oh, I got a I drip. I got a drip. Mm. Oh, God, so good. So, so good. So that that's your debate going on through your head, or at least some of the, the thoughts and the, you know, it's tough to call them anxieties or worries or fears because maybe they're not so intense. I mean, I don't know. Maybe they are. I don't, I don't I'm not there with you at night while they're you're- in, They're intense, but it's all good problems. You okay. know what I mean? So it's like my problem, our problem here is that like, ah, we've grown so much that our tap room's too small. Like it's hard to complain too much about that problem yeah. and like our possible upcoming problems. Right. So like from where we're recording this right now, we know that there is a possibility, um, 
if it just goes off the chain down there, that we're actually going to have to pull back from wholesaling. We have 80 something retailers or something like that. And like, we would have to pull back from selling to all those, including Whole Foods. Give them a little shout out. Why yeah. not? Yeah. Every Whole Foods in Arizona carries your product, correct? Yeah. Or yeah. In, in the state. In the state. Yeah. yeah. So it's, uh, <clears throat> when we'll, get, we'll get nationally. Just give me some time. <laughs> no, it's uh, good to grow slowish and organic-ish. Yeah. Um, yeah. You don't want to hop the, the state line train too quickly at all. No. Um, although I think you could. Oh, <laughs> I can't wait. Yeah. New Mexico, I'm looking at you. Yeah. You're from New Mexico. I am. Born and raised in Albuquerque. All right. So, so yeah, hopefully people get a good sense then of, of the creation of the Mead Hall all the way from Guy Fieri telling you not to just be a production facility. You saw the, the happy smiley faces in your tap room and it started getting crowded. So the growth creates a new space downtown that's going to just absolutely blow up. It's going to create another spot for people to hit on their their walkabout. Downtown Flagstaff, historic downtown Flagstaff is all about walking around. Mm-hmm. And if it's early, you're walking around having coffee and hitting some of the good coffee places and bakeries. But pretty quickly, it turns into walking around, hitting the breweries, the distillery, the bars. And now, pretty soon, the meat the hall. The meat hall. Awesome. Yeah. So cool. So episode one right now, I just want to kind of just stop it right there because that's good. We're, we're going to go into this in more depth than the other episodes. Is there anything else you want to talk about with the, the idea of it? No, I think, I think that's the biggest part. And like I've, I've said before on stuff, like we want it to be a community space. Um, we want it to be an experience for people, both in awesome mead as well as awesome customer service. So if you ever go in there and feel like you don't get that, Hit me up. I want to know. <laughs> yeah, you got your hands in all parts of the business and, and you're passionate about it and that's awesome and that shows. So, cool. Well, thank you. Woo-hoo. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. And thank you to everybody who's listening right now. Hope you guys enjoyed mm-hmm. a little insight into the Drinking Horn Mead Hall and <laughs> take that. <laughs> and have one of those. I mean, we kind of made a promise right off the bat to make every episode a little weird. So yeah. I think we kind of did. We did some beatboxing. Yeah. I just, oh, yeah. yeah. That was pretty good, too. That was really good. We're, we're pretty much professional freestylers. For once a million people have watched this and 100,000 of them are asking if we rehearsed that. No. Nope. No, we didn't. That was no, off the cuff. Freestyle. Off the cuff. Uh, do you have cuffs on? No. That's how off the cuff it was. Okay. Well, we're both going to go grab some cuffs and uh, put them on so we can do stuff off the cuff. And uh, thank you again for joining the Drinking Horn Meatcast. Absolutely. And look forward. <laughs> Lizard people. <laughs> Look forward to other episodes just as professional as this one. Absolutely. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. <laughs> mm, I want an ice cream Sunday now. Oh, yeah. All right, ice, ice cream Sunday. We have to cheers a tiny little bit left. Score. Score. Score.